guys? Welcome back to another video. Uh, I know it's been a while since my last video, but I've been pretty busy. I've been focusing on the cooling system of the car. So it's a custom cooling system using an oversized radiator and deleting of the stock expansion tank, which is actually not that hard to do, and I'll show you how to do it here soon if you're interested in doing that. Custom radiator hoses I had to make, and a few bits and parts I've done, not related to the cooling system. So I'm going to show you guys all that stuff right now. Okay, so the cooling system in this car that I've been working on, we have an E46 M3 oversized radiator. To the right is the stock one, and to the left is the aftermarket radiator for the M3. You can see that the thickness is just about double compared to stock. I just installed this slim fan, 16 inch, and also reinstalled the stock fan controller onto the radiator so the stock fan is very good it's right there but it would not fit due to clearance problems with the width of this radiator so this fan fits really nice should work out great as a high flow rate they say it's 3000 CFM but we'll see about that that's what the stock one is it should work just fine though now since we're no longer using a stock expansion tank right okay so on the expansion tank you have that's where you fill it and you also have a port for a heater hose in the back of it. So that tank is down here. Okay, here's your stock expansion tank. I'm going to set it down on the ground. That top port, the operator hose snaps into it. And then here's a heater hose. And this, and then this snaps into a bracket to seal it. And then there's another heater hose that goes down here. And it snaps on. To this bracket right here so after studying a coolant diagram of these cars those two hoses the expansion tank hose and that hose they flow in the same direction so you can simply loop them together so to do that I made this part right here using uh, one of the stock plastic snap-on couplers that snaps into the plastic hard hose coming out of the head it snaps in about right there and then I cut the heater hose coming from the heater core, cut it, and then you, you saw that barb in that piece that goes right into it. So we're using a stock fitting, and I got that, it's almost a 180 degree heater hose from AutoZone, I got that, and that just conjoins the two. So, let's see if I can get a shot for you. So down here, get the light up underneath there, there's where it goes, right there, it's looped together, you can see that? To, to the left is where it snaps on, so it worked out great. The angle of that hose lined right up where I cut the heater hose. So that bypassed, doing that bypasses the expansion tank. Also keep in mind, coolant goes in here. So me having an oversized radiator is going to compensate for the stock size. So there's going to be more enough coolant in there. And now since we got rid of the place to fill the coolant as well by deleting the expansion tank, on to custom radiator hose number one, the upper one. So that is right here. And you know the stock one usually has an, a hard 90 with the two ports, one to the radiator, one to the expansion tank. Well, I went to the junkyard and got the couplers at the thermostat like this because they're all the same size at each port. So I went to the junkyard to delete and got a regular one for the thermostat and used it up here with a 90 degree silicone coupler cut tightly. And then we have a filler neck for a uh, Dodge Durango, Dodge Dakota. And then on top of that is an 18-pound radiator cap with a relief valve on it. So that is where we're going to be filling it from the top. And I have a silicone hose right here. So the top one's all silicone. And the reason why it loops up like this is to keep it high. Because usually where you want, I'll be bleeding it right there with the cap off to bleed the cooling system. So usually you want your bleed point to be the highest part in the cooling system. So that's actually pretty level with the turbo so it's it's about right here it's gonna be I had this all mocked up and fitted so I'll show you when it's all fitted and now moving on to the bottom hose here's some cool stuff that I did I uh, use a factory hose cut it and then then again here's our coupler and this port right here that bar fitting will be feeding to the coolant the coolant of the turbo it actually won't be feeding that will be the outlet so because the water's gonna be pulling through so the water's gonna be flowing this way so the water is going to be exiting the turbo, running down through. Now I drilled and tapped another hole, not only for the barb, 
but for this coolant temp sensor. Okay, so back to deleting the hard couplers and using regular ones. Here's your stock one. You have that plastic temp sensor that snaps in there. You can't really drill and tap a thing for that. So what's cool is, if you guys recognize this, there's two temp sensors on these cars. This is one that goes into the cylinder head. And they are the same exact resistance as the plastic one down here. And this one, this second one turns on the cooling fan. The one in the head is for the ECU to compensate for fuel and all that with the uh, coolant temperature. So, uh, since, it has, since it has the same resistance as the plastic one, and I also couldn't use this one because of the room. It, it put this hose too close to the turbo manifold, so I'd use another regular coupler to bring it forward more. So my theory is, I put this offset on purpose to the right of the barb. So, since the turbo is very hot, any coolant that leaves the turbo should make direct contact with that coolant temp sensor. And since it turns on the fan, you know, it's going to be seeing very hot water from the turbo. So it should actually kick on the cooling fan a lot faster than if it was down here. So that's my theory. If I did it in the center, it probably, wouldn't have, it probably would not have seen as much of the water. So I put it to the right some. So any passing by water from the turbo will definitely hit that coolant temp sensor. All I had to do to make it work, you can use the factory plug. Right here it is. I just extended it extended it hard sorry sorry my light fell i extended it to reach the radiator hose all you had to do to modify it to make a plug in was shave off that one little leg up there there's a little step to fit the clip for the cylinder head harness but you just shave off that little leg and it snaps right into the factory harness for the original lower temp sensor hey there i'm back with a quick tip whenever you're going to reinstall your uh, water pump pulley now since the belt's no longer on the car, nothing can really hold it. So what I found is that this size of strap wrench fits perfect in there. It avoids the thermostat nice, it just rests on the idler pulley here. And then the strap holds your uh, pulley while you're attempting to tighten these. But obviously you need two hands, one to hold the strap wrench, one to snug it. So I just found that this works perfect using a strap wrench. Beside, you know, without holding with your hand stuff, you can get nice even torque while this is doing all the work for you. So that's just a quick tip. In a few moments, I should have the radiator back in and the hose is all assembled so you guys see how this is gonna work. Be right back. Okay, I'm back and our cooling system is installed. There is the upper hose connecting to the radiator. Goes to the thermostat and it is very tight in here. There's no way that stock fan would have fit. So that fan fit nice. There's the controller plugged in. And then you can see our bob down there for the water fitting. Right there. And then our coolant temp sensor's plugged in. And that's going to be fastened. The wire's going to be fastened to that little 90 degree bend right there. I'm going to fasten that. And then that hose. I'm going to take a hose off that barb and bam to that little outlet. Uh. Another reason why I did this is because my touring, my E46 touring, the daily car, its radiator is cracked. So now that I have upgraded parts in this car, I can use the stock ones on it. So I'll be using, this is a new expansion tank I bought less than a year ago. I'll put that on the wagon. That radiator back there will go in the wagon. So those parts will not be get put to waste. They'll be getting put to use. I recently uh, painted my compressor housing black. It looks so much better than the usual color of the casting aluminum so that's painted black with caliper paint which has a 900 degree fahrenheit heat resistance and it's also chemical resistant i uh, painted it took it home and baked it in my oven for an hour as per the directions so it's on there it's a very nice finish it's a satin black it's not crazy glossy it just looks a lot better i think now it's all gonna look uniform all black so so yeah guys that was basically it for this video just want to show you guys my cool system set up I think it turned out great. Everything looks the way it should. And then I also, like I said, put this catch can up here. I'm going to be getting the second filter coming off of that and everything. So yeah, this thing's definitely coming together. We're hoping to make some power soon. I didn't I didn't plan on doing this system this year, but I figured it needed done. It wasn't too expensive, so we got knocked out and done with. Looks a lot different than when I first started making videos. It's coming, coming a long way. 
So if you guys have any questions or anything, just let me know. I'm always there to answer them. Let me take a drink. My mouth's a little dry. <clears throat> but yeah, if you guys have any uh, questions, concerns, if you guys want to do this to your car or whatever, maybe, but don't get too ahead of yourself. Let me test this system, make sure it's going to work appropriately. You know, maybe next year I'll have some data and everything showing how much colder it runs. If it runs colder, it definitely should. So don't be jumping the gun and doing this because I want to personally test it first to make sure it's going to work out just fine. And then I'll do an update on how it's working. And then if you guys want to do you guys can do it, you know. I don't mind if you guys copy my ideas. You guys are free to. But yeah, uh, stick around for the next video. I think, because then I'll be doing, uh, what else I'll be doing? Probably the headlight intake that I discussed in the last video. We'll be working on the headlight intake if I can find one. Still looking. Then I'll see about getting that clutch, that block off plate. So yeah, until next time, I will see you guys later. Have a good one.